In this video, we're going to learn how to install the Human IK rig. In Maya, you will want to go to the rigging category of tools. Here I have the animation proxy model loaded and scaled appropriately according to the level. It's also placed at 000 in the world. Notice the dark cross hatches on the grid. Now inside the rigging category of tools, you'll notice that the drop down menus from about midway change to the right hand side. We'll be working in skeleton and skin drop downs today. Go to skeleton all the way down to human IK. When you click on that particular choice, you'll see that your menu options change in the right hand side. You will have access to the Human IK category of tools. It's a very simple tool set. Let me take you through it. This very first uh, tool set allows you to create your skeleton and modify your skeleton. So always working in the orthographic views as much as possible, you will simply create skeleton. Now you'll notice that there is a skeleton generated inside the uh, world. It's also aligned with the 000 location in the world. If I go to my perspective view, I can go ahead and tumble around my character and see that the two almost align. At this point, you'll have a choice whether you need to scale your character or your rig. If you have checked the scale of your static mesh inside your level, you're not going to want to scale your character. You will want to scale your rig. So in this case, what we want to do is make sure that we are selecting the rig over here to modify the scale of the character, uh, the uh, bone system. Notice that 1.0 is the default setting. That will be the default setting no matter how much you scale that up or down, simply because it resets that to the 1.0 scale for your integration into your game engine. Now, we don't have a lot of scaling to do, but you simply can go ahead and modify this by entering a new value, whether you need to scale that up or down, or you can make the decision to move these bones around uh, to match the scale of your of your skeleton, or excuse me, your animation proxy model. The uh, hips, the pelvis region is what I normally check for. If the length of my legs, my pelvis is in the correct place, which is center of mass on my character, the fold points are matching that particular first joint in the leg hierarchy. And switching to my side view, I can see that my, um, my joints for my ankle and the ball of my foot are in the appropriate place the characters on the ground. Now, in this particular case, the leg of my character is not straight, so I will come back and modify the location slightly of these particular bones. I do want to start from the core and work out, so in this case, I can go ahead and check my spine location first. Again, pelvis first. That is the, uh, the first joint in your hierarchy. So we want to check and make sure that that is center of mass for your model. I'm going to check that both side and front view. Remember, you're working in 3D. So checking those various views is very important. I'm going to go ahead and also check the location of my uh, joints for my clavicle. There's two schools of thought uh, for the placement of this particular joint. Uh, low, you get more rotational value out of that um, shoulder. 
if you go high, which is a natural point of that, at that point of rotation for the clavicle, you'll get less rotation in the shoulder. Now the head nub is placed normally at the axis point for the skull, the top of the neck, so that should be just about right between the ears of your character. That's the location where your skull mass sits right on top of your spine, and that's the rotation of your skull. So all of these vertices on your mesh will be 100%. They're very close, weighted to this particular joint. When we get there, we'll go through the weighting of the skin mass. All right, now let's take a look at the arms. I'm only going to be working on one side because you have a mirroring tool. So I'm going to be working on the right hand side. Selecting the shoulder, I can go ahead and move that down slightly. I'm going to uh, make sure that this particular limb string is as straight as possible. On this particular rig, it seems to work best. It seems to be um, better if you just make sure that that bone string remains nice and straight. All right, I'm looking at, as I move the position of my parent node for this joint string, I'm also going to be looking at the, uh, the node, the child node for the arm, and that's at the wrist, making sure that that is center of gravity or excuse me, center of mass. Now I'm going to check my top-down view. Now again, it's I found that it's better to rotate this limb and keep it nice and straight while you're positioning the center of mass for your wrist. Now sometimes you'll get a character that's posed and that's a little bit more difficult to rig you'll find if you rig and then animate with your rig, it'll make you a better modeler. Now once I have a center of mass on my wrist, I'm going to go ahead and continue down the string to make sure that my finger joints are in the proper place. Now if you find you're selecting your mesh, you can simply lock that down. You select it, come to the channel box, layer editor, you see my wiggly cursor on the screen. On the right hand side, go ahead and click on that. Down below here, you uh, are able to create a, <coughs> excuse me, a layer for your character and place that on there so that you can uh, continue to work without selecting that mesh.